Welcome to the online worship presentation from Green Valley Evangelical Lutheran Church. We're glad that you can join us. If you'd like to follow along with a worship service, it's uh, down there in a, a PDF format. Uh, there's a little box underneath the view screen on our website. There's also on the other side a little box that you can uh, look at the printed sermon. Uh, and then right below, uh, in the middle, there's the online donate uh, option that's available for you. Once again, we're glad that you could join us. We sing the first hymn. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This morning we rejoice to worship our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, dwelling in majesty and mystery, filling and renewing all creation by your eternal spirit, and manifesting your saving grace through our Lord Jesus Christ, in mercy cleanse our hearts and lips, that free from doubt and fear, we may ever worship you, one true immortal God, with your Son and the Holy Spirit, living and reigning now and forever. Amen. The word from God's prophet is recorded in Isaiah chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. The earth is full of the glory of the Lord. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. 
Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word from God's prophet. The psalm for the day is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The word from God's apostle is recorded in Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 14. Children of the triune God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we also may share in his glory. This is the word from God's apostle. The word from God's Son is recorded in John chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. God so loved the world. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it is coming from or where it is going. So it is with everyone, born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? I tell you the truth, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the gospel of our Lord. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing the next hymn. of grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God before us today is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the word of our God. Dear friends in Christ, hallelujah. What does it mean? Is it the tragic love ballad by Leonard Cohen? Is it the shout of delight at a country western life gone incredibly right? An ironic response to a speech gone too long? That's the trouble with foreign words taken out of context. Their meaning drifts. Let's not let that happen with hallelujah today. At the heart of hallelujah is unparalleled joy and happiness. The Psalms, which start with happy is the man, end with hallelujah. Hallelujah for all he is. Hallelujah with all I am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah for all he is. It starts here. The Hebrew word hallelujah literally means praise the Lord. At, at the very end of the psalm, that's what it means. The Masoretes, the Hebrew scholars who copied the Old Testament, indicate that. Praise the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The Savior God who promises to send the Savior into the world and will let no one and nothing stand in his way. 
This Savior God also is the Savior, the embodiment of that promise made flesh in the person of Jesus. True God, begotten of the Father from all eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary. He is our Lord. Overlook that. And life is nothing but a tragic love ballad. Overlook that. And everything will go incredibly wrong. The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that's where we live. Hallelujah, for all he is. The Lord deserves our praise. Now, let's look at that first hallelujah, the one mistakenly translated, praise the Lord. We've got phrases in our language that don't mean what they seem to mean. Growing up in Minnesota, we would say, kiss a pig and hope to die. Nobody was going to visit the mortician and then traipse off to my uncle's farm, go to the pig pen, and give Daisy a big smooch to seal the deal. It was uh, an expression of surprise. Something so outlandishly unexpected had happened that we said, kiss a pig and hope to die. In other circles, people would say, God bless them. When talking about people who are clueless, it was a, an expression of often condescending pity. Figures of speech don't mean what they seem to say. Everybody knows that, unless you don't. Hallelujah is an expression of sheer joy exaltation and boundless happiness over the fact that you exist at this place at this time for this very purpose hallelujah is a mother taking her child into her hands for the first time hallelujah is a young man hearing that special someone say i do Hallelujah. Hallelujah is not meant for perfectly roasted chicken coming out of the oven with potatoes and celery and carrots stewing in its juices. Oh no, you don't say hallelujah at a surprise birthday party sprung on you, which is no surprise to you. You don't pull hallelujah down to the ordinary just like you don't take that fancy scarf you bought at that highfalutin boutique store on the strip and use it for a dusting rag. In our ordinary lives, if you come up with 20 hallelujah, hallelujah moments, you have lived. Your heart swells bigger than your ribs can cage it in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the perfect word to describe our relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah for all he is. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. People often display in their homes what they are proud of. There may be a mounted deer head in the family room. A, a picture of the person shaking hands with someone famous, maybe a former president or an entertainer, best yet an Elvis impersonator. But always pictures of the family. God has a family. The exalted one, the mighty one, the one above everyone and everything. God, God has a family. He has a family on earth in his sanctuary, the gathering of all believers in Jesus Christ's name. He has a family in heaven, his mighty heavens, the angels and all the believers who have left this world. God's families praise God for all he is. God is praised for all he is in the sanctuary for his gifts of power. Well, the sanctuary for the Old Testament Jew was the temple. That's where the formal worship took place, the morning and the evening sacrifices, the personal sin sacrifices offered during the day, the festive sacrifices, communal meals shared with joyous worshipers. There was no place like it, the temple. 
Oh, religious instruction also was carried out there, but unlike the sacrifices, which were to take place only within the temple grounds, the religious instruction was to flow from the temple to the towns, to the dinner tables of God's people. But it rang out loudest and best from the sanctuary. That's why the rest of the country thought people who lived in Jerusalem were particularly blessed. That's where the young Jesus spent his time when in Jerusalem. Forgiveness of sins rang out from the temple. That's what all those animal sacrifices were designed to do. Far from taking away sin, the blood of animal sacrifices taught the people that God would substitute someone else to pay the penalty, death, for their sins. And so every one of those bulls and oxen, sheep and goats, every single dove that was sacrificed pointed ahead to the Savior whose death would be the real payment for the sins of all people. John the Baptist didn't have to explain himself when he first pointed out Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Everybody who had been to the sanctuary knew exactly what he was talking about. For that, God is to be praised first and foremost. Oh, but we think forgiveness of sins is such a trifling. Why would the Almighty God be concerned with that? Aren't there better things we should praise Him for? Well, in part, this attitude comes from our sinful human nature because it doesn't think God has much of an impact on our lives. Oh, yes, yes, my sins are forgiven, but hey, did you catch the comeback of the Golden Knights the other day? In part, this attitude comes from our desire to change the topic. If I'm caught red-handed, I want to point out others who have done worse than I. If God forgives my sin, that must mean I am a sinner. And if I don't want to admit that, and my sinful human nature doesn't want to admit anything, I will want to talk about other things God does. Jesus was powerful. He performed many, many miracles, but he only died on the cross once. It took tremendous strength to win forgiveness of sins. It takes strength to march into hell, rub the devil's nose in his defeat, and then march back out of hell without even the whiff of brimstone clinging to you. Jesus did all of that on Easter Sunday, even before the women got there, as the sun was first rising. Jesus is our warrior who overcame sin, death, and the devil. Nuclear power weapons couldn't cut it. Laser weapons were too slow. A God is our mighty Savior. Praise Him for all He is. And now we can turn to everything else he does. He paints every rainbow. He gives life to every germinating seed. His eye is on the sparrow, and he rides the solar winds. He juggles galaxies in a heavenly dance that stretches beyond our imagination. He called the angels, the angel hosts into being, bright as the stars of the sky awesome, transcendent, beyond even the lyrics of music on Christian radio. He is beyond human words. Maybe that's why the psalmist was reduced to talking about God's surpassing greatness. To rejoice in the beauty of nature, to thrill at the life force so stubborn in the face of disaster, that's hallelujah. Hallelujah for all he is. Hallelujah with all I am. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Well, don't take this as the musical score for the Old Testament worship service. 
it, it would create quite a racket. Symbols we can understand with the crash and the clash. Tambourines, well that goes with dancers, but that would make for a pretty robust performance. Strings and flute, harp and lyre, well that, that, that seems more in tune with, with the contemplative music we would associate with worship, but the sounding of the trumpet, oh, and, and don't. Don't think of that little three-valve con trumpet you've rented for your sixth grader. This is a ram's horn, the shofar. And it wasn't being played softly in the bedroom until Junior learned his part to William Tell's overture. It is the clap, the blast, the jab. It's the sort of sound you hear on the city wall to let everybody know the enemy has been spotted coming over the hills. It's what you use to ring in New Year's before they invented electric balls to drop. Even a hard of hearing rabbi would have a hard time sitting through a service with all of this going on. But that's just the point. The psalmist has included everything that went on in the temple worship throughout the year and throughout the day, from the blast of the ram's horn on New Year's to the dancing of the tambourines in one of the festivals, and the strings and the harp and the lyre for more solemn services. Everything was enlisted for hallelujah. Everything they had was to be put into the hallelujah. Hallelujah for all he is with all I am. Everything we have is to be put into worship. Worship calls for the best in each one of us. I will participate in the worship. I will give it my all. I'll try to follow Peeper's sermons, and if I don't catch on, I can grab a sermon, copy of the sermon, and take it home and reread it. I will join in the prayers, join in the liturgy, the confession of sins, the Apostles' Creed. I'm not the greatest singer in the world, but you know what? God wants to hear my voice singing his praises. And when everybody else around me sings, it sort of drowns me out. And so there's a wonderful anonymity. I can be the clashing cymbal or the, the blast of the ram's horn in the singing. And it will be great because I will give it my best, my all. And the Holy Spirit will mix and mingle the voices together. And we will give of our best. We will encourage our young ones to consider the public ministry for the work of their life. When I graduated from high school, the Watergate scandal was just starting to unfold. Politicians were seriously telling the youth of the country not to go into politics. It was beneath them. Maybe we're living with the consequences of that advice. I am not here to tell you today that the public ministry is beneath anyone. It has been the calling of my life. I have been challenged, frustrated, perplexed, thrilled, honored, proud, and humbled, but never bored. Even being at the same congregation for 33 years, not a single one of them has been the same. And after this past year, I think all of you can see what I mean. When the next guy comes around, I don't worry that he will suggest to his buddies that Peeper didn't organize the congregation very well. When the next guy comes around, his heart and his brain are going to be big enough to realize that the believers gathered at Green Valley Evangelical Lutheran Church organized four churches and sent three of them away, one to heaven and two throughout our valley and our country. You look at the homegrown talent we have been given, our teachers, from Mrs. Nielsen two days into her self-proclaimed forever retirement, to Mrs. Revis, our director, Mrs. Redmond, Greist, Crow, Birnbaum, Plutz, Heine, Tapani, and Snyder. They are first rate, top notch. 
They are not serving as your public ministers at Green Valley Lutheran School because they didn't have any other options. We called them, and the Holy Spirit moved them to accept that call. We have two young men in our congregation, Mr. Anthony Navarro, our congregational assistant who will start his duties this August, and Zachary Turley, who has just completed his undergraduate studies and will start the seminary this fall. They did not choose this course of action because of the benefits package. And now put that together with the fact that our national church body graduated and assigned 28 pastors this week. They had to sing a few extra hymns and say their names real slow to make the service last an hour. We can do better. We need to do better. If you are sharp, if you like hard work, if you like being knee-deep in people, if the love of Jesus is helping, is moving you to help other people, don't rule out one humble college in Minnesota to start your journey toward the public ministry. They have, okay, athletics. The dorms are so-so. Nobody has died yet from the cafeteria food, but the training in God's word is unsurpassed. Encourage your children and your grandchildren to consider it. We will not stop the hallelujah when we leave this church. We will see the Lord's forgiveness at work in our lives, and we will forgive others as we are being forgiven. We will say our prayers, we will think about the Bible stories, and start to see modern retellings of them in our lives and in the lives of those around us. We will rejoice in the beautiful world God has given us. We will fill our heads and hearts with noble and gracious things that in turn ennoble us. Our God doesn't just rule within these four walls. He rules our world, protecting his people, thwarting the plans of the wicked. Hallelujah! For all he is, with all I am, Hallelujah. It was the only way to end the Psalms. What higher praise could we give God, our Lord? Hallelujah for his surpassing greatness. Hallelujah for his mighty deeds of forgiveness. Hallelujah with everything that I have in me. Hallelujah from hearts renewed daily by the joy of his salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. with mine as we pray the responsive prayer from the church. Lord God, maker and preserver of all, we praise and thank you for all you give us day after day. We are not worthy of the mercies you show us. May the word we have heard take root in our hearts and bear fruit in our lives, and may it encourage us to shine as lights in this sinful world. Heavenly Father, protect us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime and the pain of disease and the perils of the devil. Heal those who are sick, cheer those who are sad,
calm those who are confused, and give comfort to all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessing to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, let there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, and disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. Protect those who travel by land, sea, and air. We pray especially that you keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Bless those who serve you at this place. Give them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. We bring all these requests before you, dear Lord, and ask you to hear us. But above all, we give ourselves to you, that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Take what we have, gracious God, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our possessions and offerings, and use them to your glory. We ask this for Jesus' sake. In his name we are confident to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We sing the next hymn. Sing a new song to the Lord, he whom wonders belong. Rejoice in his triumph and tell of his power. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song.
We pray. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing the closing hymn. our online worship presentation from Green Valley Evangelical Lutheran Church. If you'd like to donate to the Lord's work carried out through the ministry of Green Valley Evangelical Lutheran Church, there's that little donate button right under the view screen of the computer that your computer screen you've been looking at. Um, uh, next week, you're not going to see me. I'm changing pulpits with Pastor Andrew Miller at uh, Beautiful Savior Evangelical Lutheran Church. This worship presentation will be aired on their website, and his worship service presentation, uh, which they're showing today, will be shown on our website. So we'll have a little mix and match. You'll be able to see another one of our Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod pastors from the Valley. He's a great preacher. I'm sure you'll enjoy him. God be with you today till we see each other again.